Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Davi Santos about Good Sam on CBS. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Peter. Does it kind of just happen that you work on a lot of different projects and play different characters, or is it something you hope for? It's totally both. Uh, <laughs> I got what I hope for. I get what I hope for. Yeah, yeah. It's a delight to jump into completely different worlds. It You really have. Like We were talking before we started about all the different projects, right? Like Power Rangers and everything. And this is, is pretty different compared to other things you've done in the, in the past as well, right? Like you're playing a doctor in this. In the others, you're playing, you know, <laughs> Power Rangers and deep sea divers like what's that like a little bit yeah i feel like this is my first foray into an actual professional in the real <laughs> world you're telling me power rangers is not a profession that's an insult well, to the power rangers man uh, yeah and, and they were like a low-key paleontologist slash cafe <laughs> being, yeah. i didn't think about that yeah because it was dino charge yeah <laughs> yeah and, and in a way there is something about it that feels still like we're superheroes we run in a group we're having these tools we use these mm -hmm. skill sets that the ca casual person doesn't use so it still kind of feels like we're here i mean we certainly are heroes oh um, absolutely but i'm looking at the good sam you know sophia bush jason isaacs just stacked such an amazing cast what was it like working with everyone on this Oh, uh, I mean, a delight. I learned so much from just watching Jason and Sophia, and they come from different camps, and they deliver and bring so much to the table, yeah. uh, both on set as well as off. Uh, it's, yeah, just utterly a delight and so much fun. It's it's so amazing to see, and I'm just curious what your mindset is. Like, you wrap the show, and you're kind of playing the waiting game a little bit when it kind of airs on CBS, because I feel like it's different for different projects. You might, some projects you might wrap and then, you know, three months later, you didn't have to wait that long. It's airing or something. But like, what was it like with this project? Like cable television? Like, did you have to, like, did, what was the wait around time from like shooting it and it premiere and then premiering? Well, you're hitting the nail on right now. Cause uh, yeah, this is actually an experience I haven't really had where we're not finished. We just started airing and we still have another halfway to go. So I'm still Whoa. learning things about the show as I read new episodes, figuring out what happens to us, as well as watch what we've done and allowing that to also impact what we still do. Oh, man. So what's that mindset like where, like, you could talk, like, you could go work and be like, first couple episodes aired, like, oh, my God, and then like, you're making more. Like, what's that like a little bit? It's a little surreal. I mean, yesterday <laughs> we started out the day shooting episode seven and then... We were all crossing our fingers that we'd get out in time to make the 10 o'clock new episode three that's coming out. So, yeah, we just like jumped in our cars and ran to to the screening and, and made it. But it's cool. It's cool to see what the show is like and what show we're doing while yeah. we're doing it. Is it I'm just can you tell me what you knew about the audition process? Like did you know it was medical show, medical drama? Like like what did you know about your character? Like I'm just curious. Cause I feel like different kind of situations. Sometimes you might know more than an audition, but sometimes you don't know much. Like, did you know enough about what you were kind of getting yourself into when you auditioned for this? I had a, a feeling. I had yeah. a feeling. Uh, they gave sort of like a, a cool stroke to go into, a, a character okay. stroke, a, yeah. a good idea as to sort of his demeanor and uh, sort of the way he deals with patients uh, that allowed me to unlock some of the humor going into the audition. Mm -hmm. And and But I did find that I was learning about him with every episode, learning okay. something new. Yeah, for sure. Because I feel like I love the story sometimes where it's like I don't even know – my character was going to like do the things that my character did. Like, I love those. Like, I feel like that's exciting too, right? Where you don't know much and then like you kind of get in there and you're kind of thrown in and they're like, wow, like this is a lot more arc than I thought it was going to be, right? I guess it depends on the project a little bit. For sure. For sure. Uh, and in this case, it's also who is the person behind the medical professional? Yes. Who is the, the, the human uh, behind his aspirations for being a great plastic surgeon? 
Absolutely. And and there's other projects, you know, I wanted to talk to you about. I'm smiling a little bit because like we talked about before we started, like there's a movie I need to talk to you about. Um, but like before we get into that, can you tell me a little bit about your character in Good Sam? Like you talk about the process and everything, but like what can we expect from your character a little bit? Sure. So I play Dr. Joey Costa and we see him on the plastic surgery route, which we very quickly learn too isn't just cosmetic it's also in arm replacements and and body part putting together micro surgeries it's it's very intense uh and joe almost as intense as joey is he is incredibly dedicated and will almost push his the fellow residents which are usually teammates on these shows and he'll almost push them aside in order to get into that surgery so there's also some a morality question as to like, well, is he is he a good guy? Is he a little bit too cutthroat? But on the other hand, it's he's being cutthroat to save people's throats. He's, you know, he's mean to his comrades. Interesting. Be like the best doctor there is. Well, yeah, I have I have friends on um, a show called Nurses, which was on Global, yeah. Um, and yeah, and some of the nurses are like very intense and they say like, Hey, if I'm not intense, like lives, like lives are lost. Exactly. And I'm like, that's interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Yeah. But it also seems like Joey's also learning how to, yeah. And in that case, be more compassionate because also yeah. we've learned that doctors are almost not to their fullest potential when they're not there with the patient as a human and not just something yeah. that needs to be treated, but like a human being. So he has yeah. to learn to to ground himself and to connect in in order to have a, a healthy circle of friends as well as to have a healthy relationship, which uh, he quickly puts into peril uh, when he takes it for granted. It's interesting too. You mentioned like the cutthroat aspect of it because I find that so interesting with characters, Davi. Where like there's like that misunderstood component to a lot of characters like you know you've been you've seen a lot of shows where there's just a lot of characters they're just bad people like on the screen they're the they're the the bad guys you know what i mean like but there's a lot of characters if you dive deep into it a little bit more that like and you see their arc throughout seasons or like through movies like they're very misunderstood oh, sure. which i find interesting as well Absolutely. And isn't, aren't we all, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, usually when there is anyone under uh, a motivation that's questionable, there's often values that they're trying to work through. They're trying to understand the world or they just have a twisted way of looking at things because of something that happened. Not to ever say something maybe forgivable, but it, at least understandable. It's never just like evil to be evil or villainous to be villainous or just... I guess difficult to be with, you know, to deal with. Absolutely. Yeah. So Good Sam, CBS. Um I'm speaking to a former Power Ranger on my show right now, am I not? You are, yes, Sir <laughs> Ivan Sandar. I was a knight. Yeah. Isn't it interesting too? I, I joke like I've interviewed a lot of people from like Cobra Kai on Netflix, and you know, that show is known for a lot of their stunts and everything, sure. and the stunt men, and they talk about their stunt doubles and everything, right? And I just feel like the best job is like the actors on Power Rangers where their stunt doubles are like wearing the whole costume. Yeah. So you never know. Maybe that is Dobby Santo. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was always asking to have more civilian fights so that you see our face, you know, and, you know, we get fight choreo that's like all these punches. And I'm like, guys, I'm a second degree black belt. Let me throw some kicks. You know, this is the time to do it. Was there a kind of a situation where like you did you did you get were you able to do some of your own stunts oh, for sure. because of that? Yeah, we yeah. Every single civilian fight that shows our face we would do. And then we would also have our incredible stunt team would do it. And then they, when they're in the suits, they just go all out to the yeah, back flipping. Exactly. And they, just, they just don't want the actors being hoisted in, in wires and, and doing flips. And, and I mean, any injury like that would just, you know, block the show. You know, I think a case can be made. Like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like the original theme song. I think a case could be made that it's like the greatest theme song of all time, in my <laughs> One opinion. One of them, for sure. It goes down our <laughs> iconic psychological memory. And I grew up like a big, fa like, I'm a big fan of a lot of music, but I'm a metalhead and everything. Yeah. You're like an eight year old watching Power Rangers, and that's the most metal theme song with a guitar solo yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, very few, especially for superhero shows that are that is known for bringing in like such a young audience, and it's so heavy metal. It's so heavy metal, and it's awesome. Oh man, the amount of hours I logged watching Power Rangers when I was a kid, oh, like sure. same here, so same here. many. But I also logged a lot of hours watching horror movies, mm-hmm. and we're talking about one of my favorite. I'm not even kidding you, man. Like probably like. Top fi- if I would make a list of like my top 50 horror movies of all time, nice. your film would be in there. Oh, amazing. Oh, I appreciate we're to- it. And, and you, you, want, you want to tell my viewers what, uh, what we're talking about? You are talking about 47 Meters Down 2. Uncaged. Uncaged. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I love that movie was so fun. So good. It was one of those movies, too, where like when the trailer came out, I was just so excited to see it because mm. it just kind of gra- like it grabbed me right away and it lived up to the hype. I loved everything about it. What was it like kind of filming that movie and working on that? An incredible joy because we yeah. were taught. I mean, it's very few opportunities when you make a film that. Yeah, they fly you to the Caribbean, you're put up in a resort, you're with this awesome cast, and then they're teaching you how to scuba dive. And then that's like a whole <laughs> chunk, you know? Uh, I've always wanted to learn how to scuba dive. In fact, I used to have, it wasn't even a mood board, but I would just have this picture of like a diver underwater uh, as a kid yeah. growing up. So it was really cool to be the diver one day. And we also had these suits that apparently only 5% of divers around the world get to use because it's a full headgear. In other words, you can just like do these backflips in all these different directions and you always have a sense of, uh, you never have water in your nose and your ears. Uh, it allows you to communicate. You wouldn't be able to do dialogue without that. Now, those were not real sharks. Was that all CGI? It was CGI. However, we did have okay. uh, like a substitute physical shark in the shot. So they actually had a swimmer with like a prosthetic shark head uh, attack me and like bump into me. And so when have... you were like, dis- like when you were eaten by the sharks, right? You you right? I'm pretty sure were you yeah. you were like yeah yeah you 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 were a goner. Chomp, right? chomp, everyone, chomp, I feel like everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um. What? what... <laughs> so I'm interested about that. It's what was that like filming that? Like knowing that there wasn't real, like there was gonna be a shark kind of put it after. Like what's going for your mind? That really interests me. Uh, I mean, I, I love getting scared. I've done a few horrors over the course of my career so far, and I, I love it. I love that anticipation, like that feeling. Of, I, the thing is, though, um, the death scene was shot as a surprise, and what they used in the film was very sudden. It's more of a shock. But what we ended up filming was this long, drawn-out um, eating sequence where I'm being torn up. So it was yeah. actually much more difficult to film because my mask would nor would hey, I'm being flipped like this. In fact, they had me on like on a they didn't even use it. They didn't even use the shot, but they had me on this rig and then underwater and then the rig would move left and right to simulate the shark being in the shark's mouth and being pulled. And meanwhile, my mask would fly up and I would be losing breath, but I would want them to get the shot. It was I think there's the the concept of that too. And like John Corbett is in this movie too, and he's awesome. And mm-hmm. like Oh man, I gotta go after this interview. I'm probably gonna go rewatch it again because, like, I love that movie so much. It's it's fun. It's a lot but it's of like fun. you know they keep making shark movies, and it's like I watch all of them. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things. Like it's you're in one of the best ones in my opinion. But like they will, I don't think that they'll ever get old. Mm. Uh, they're not every shark movie is the same. There was like that one about the six headed shark or something. My little brother. Yeah, but I'm talking about yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like Sharknado movies. Yeah. yeah. yeah and so, yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. It's but, uh, no, for sure. But before we wrap up, getting back to Good Sam, when they get a chance to see it, mm. um, what are you hoping they get out of it, takeaway wise, Dobby? Well, it's, it's a family drama, not in the sense that it's for families, but it's a family drama in that it's this hospital where the head of it is, um, yeah. it's, it's, well, Sam is uh, the, the head surgeon, and her dad used to be the boss, but after Mm -hmm. he gets into a coma, she takes his job and then when he wakes up, he wants it back and she won't give it to him. So it's like this crazy like fight within the family for something you want while you still love the other person. And then they start to, I guess, manipulate the circumstances in order to get what they want. So uh, it's the ride. It's like the ride of seeing how far people go 
to to get what they want even when the person they love is sort of like in the way uh so it's it's a little bit like succession and uh while still having like set, like feelings of house you know um grace anatomy uh it's cool it's it's a it's a real fun treat oh absolutely thank you so much for coming on the show man it was great chatting with it was you. good chatting with you as well peter thanks for having me Absolutely. And uh, where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Instagram? Yeah. Instagram is my primary, and my handle is at two, as in the number, Davi Santos. Mm-hmm. D A V I Santos. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn. If youtube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Davi Santos, which you can, who you can catch at Good Sam on CBS and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn it Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.